Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to continue looking at SketchUp Free. All right, welcome back. This is now part six in the video series on SketchUp Free. If you're new to SketchUp or new to 3D modeling, I invite you to go back and start with part one of this series because this part, this is now part six, is going to pick up where we left off at the end of part five. At the end of part five, we were looking at the flip top table and specifically the hide and un unhide features of the uh, of SketchUp Free. So in this video, what we're going to do is capitalize on that feature. First, let me fix what I kind of took apart at the end of the last video. So I just made my flip top a group again. And now I'm going to move it back into position using the move tool. All right, so that's it right there. And I think before I go any further, I'll hit save. Okay, so now I'm all saved. So what I wanna do now is uh, let you know that my particular design process is such that I like backing up all of my work. So I always have a way to to undo anything that I've that I do from this point going forward. So what I tend to do is I'll make this whole model a group. So that's now a group. And just as I showed in the earlier videos, I'm going to copy the whole group and then paste it. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original and I'm going to hide it. Okay, so it's still there. In fact, if I click Show Hidden Objects in the display panel, as we did in just in the previous video, I can bring it back, right click it, and say unhide, and there it is. But for this video, I want to hide it, and then I'm going to turn off this little check mark, which make which makes it takes it out of our view. All right, so that's typically what I do when I want to modify my original model. I'll make a copy of it and modify the copy. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So I've already done that. So uh, let me actually remove this copy because I've already made some copies of the model or a copy of the model. So here it is. And while I'm at it, just so we don't, well, I guess it might be useful for you to see the progression of the models. OK, so what I've got here is I started in this model, I started to look at the joinery for the side pieces. So let me show you specifically. I decided to use half lap joints for the for the sides. Okay? And those were made just as I showed in the earlier videos. Same exact process. Then for the lower pieces down here, 
I also used half lap joints where I could. So this piece is intended to go all the way across the front. And so I have a half lap joint here and a mating half lap joint here. Okay. So I drew the half lap joint in this side. I have not, I've drew half of it on this side. I haven't finished drawing it right here. Okay. Then the side piece was a little bit different. I wanted to continue to use the half lap joints. So I put a rabbit in the end of the stringers on the sides. But because, because this piece is an inch and a half thick or wide, right, inch and a half, and the side piece that I'm going to mount it to is also an inch and a half. I can't put a rabbit all the way through because there won't be anything to mount a screw to. Let me try and explain that a little bit more. So part of my design process is that I'm always thinking about how I'm actually going to make this as I'm drawing up these shapes. So it's there's sort of some strategy here, some design strategy. So I knew for example, that when I put these half lap joints in here, this rabbit here and this rabbit in here, I guess this would be a dado because it goes all the way through. And tell you what, let me, what I want to do is I want to hide this and this. These are the leveling feet. Okay, so I've got a, date, a dado joint here, right? And I think that's what you would call it. And then there's a, a rabbit joint here. And so what I'm able to do, it's saving. That's why it's not letting me click on anything yet. Okay. So what I'm able to do is I can take this piece, which is its own group, and I can move it into place like so and you can see how that fits okay so once again as I'm designing I'm always thinking about how I can actually build this so back over to this side what I want to be able to do is push this piece into that notch. That's what I decided I needed to do so that I can put a screw all the way through here and into here to hold it into place. Just like I intend to put a screw in here and go into the wood here to hold this into place. And of course there'll be uh, some glue in there as well to keep it secure. So once again, just to reiterate, as I'm designing here, I'm thinking about how I'm actually going to fabricate. Now, this particular, I would call this a notch, this represents a challenge, like how am I going to cut a notch out of this piece of 2x4? So I'm, as I'm thinking about that, while well, I can use a Forstner bit and try and take away most of the material and then use a nice sharp chisel to get these sides chiseled into the notch. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But that'll represent a little bit of a challenge. I don't know that I've done that before in a previous um, woodworking project. All right, so that's a little bit about the design process for that. Let me call your attention to one other thing too. So when I click on the whole model, you can see that it's a group because the whole thing is selected. And then you also saw me move this piece into position. Well, how did I do that without exploding the group, which is what you saw me do in the previous videos? Well, if I right-click, there's the explode option. 
You can also use the edit group option. And this is very, very powerful because you don't have to take apart or explode your entire group to actually edit it. So if I click on edit group, now it shows me that I'm working with a group because now I have these dotted lines that outline the whole group that I'm editing. Now if I click on this piece, which is a member of the group, and it is a group all by itself, so remember we kind of talked about that in an earlier video where you can make groups you can put groups inside of other groups kind of like nesting and that again is also very very valuable so as I uh, selected this particular piece it is a group you can tell because of the way it's highlighted then I can use the move tool to actually move just this selected group into position which is what you saw me do before and the reason they don't stick together this won't stick together won't stick to this is because this is also its own group so again I call your attention or remind you to I demonstrated it in one of the earlier videos what happens if you don't put your parts into groups they they stick together and form this um, odd stickiness, which you probably are not interested in. So again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, look at it. Look at the earlier video. I'll try and leave a link to the video that I'm referring to. So if I reselect this member, I can click on this endpoint. It's going to click on the endpoint for the member that's selected, not the member of this unselected piece and then I can move it out so notice as I move it out notice that dark dash line okay it's black when I'm sort of off axis when I move it a little bit it turns green okay and it actually puts up a little tooltip that says on green axis okay and it also I guess it's telling me that I'm outside the active boundary of the group which is fine. So now if I left mouse click again, I'm going to position that part. It actually moved the boundary, the outside boundary of the whole group, because this piece, which is its own group, is still part of the overall group. So when I move this piece outside the previous active boundary of the existing group, and then positioned it, by left mouse clicking, it redrew the boundary for the active group. Interesting. Okay, so very powerful to understand how groups work, how the explode feature works, and now how to edit within a group. So at this point, I'm going to end this video. And once again, thanks for watching.